Thank you, Jeff. And I'm going to take my mask off. And some of you may be wondering, why was Pastor Kevin without a mask? And why are you taking your mask off? Don't we have an edict from the governor that says we have to wear a mask anytime we're indoors in a public space? And I want to read to you the, uh, the guideline from that edict. And if I'm reading it correctly, it says, for services that are recorded, this is for church services, right, that are recorded or filmed without a live audience, then face coverings are not required for individuals while they are speaking. So as long as I'm speaking, I'm going to be okay and not have to wear a mask. So what I've decided, I'm just going to keep speaking until the lifting is over. So settle in, sit back, and let's just keep going because I really don't want to wear a mask again. No, I'm kidding. All right. Hey, you know what? It seems like the world has gone crazy. And we've been looking at this idea of, of our spiritual eyes and what is behind this crazy world. Uh, is it simply the natural flow of the way things are? Is it just simply the way things are happening right now? I remember when Sandy and I, we bought our first new car. It was, it was a new car. It wasn't a used car. We bought a new car from the dealership. And, and uh, we had uh, we'd moved from Texas to, uh, to Oregon. And she's driving down one of the busy streets there in, in the town we were living in. And the car just stopped. And she, she, she's got to call me. We, we, I think it was even maybe before cell phones. Maybe she just had her first cell phone anyway. We, we got to come and find out. We get it towed, and it was a mess. And the computer had just went out. It was a you know, new car, and the computer went out and said, oh, yeah, these computers, you know, these new cars, blah, blah, blah. I got out. Was that, you know, just, just crazy. Um, <clears throat> we were in uh, Israel a number of years ago, and we're in Bethsaida, and the bus breaks down. And we're like, great, the, the bus is broken down. And we probably spent an hour and a half, two hours in Bethsaida. If you go to Israel with us, we'll take you to Bethsaida. It's not a really big city. It's all ruins now. And it only takes about 30 minutes to really uh, look through and enjoy and see the places where Jesus uh, walked. So an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even more. And, and, we're, it's, and Bethsaida's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And we're there, and it's like, what's going on? Is this just another one of those things? Just the computer goes out? Is this, you know, just part of our, our world? Things break and the whole deal? Well, because we were so delayed in Bethsaida, it kept us from going to Jericho. And we, we wanted to get to Jericho, but we didn't get to, get to go. And we had found out that at the same time about that we were going to be in Jericho, they had they had, had a, a stabbing, some teenagers got killed, and, and they had blamed it on the... Um, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians were in an uproar. And so they actually started riots in Jericho about the same time we were there. And we had a bunch of older people with us and, and, uh, and church folks, and it would have been very dangerous for us. And so you stop and you think, and you go, well, was that God that had the bus break down to keep us from going to Jericho? So was that the Holy Spirit? You know, what was going on there? And a lot of times things happen in our world, and I don't know the meaning behind them at all. I don't know if there's any spiritual significance, but there are some things that happen that if we we'll allow God to open our spiritual eyes, Allow us to help us to see something different than what we can just see in the natural. We've been talking about our spiritual eyes, and, and with our natural eyes, we need microscopes, we need telescopes, and, and when we have those things, where all of a sudden the world is, it becomes you know, so much more clear. The Word of God gives us a microscope, a telescope into what God is doing. It allows us to see beyond what we see. We will look at the world and how crazy it is right now. Is there something else going on? Does the Bible help us to see what we can't see? And I'm going to ask one of the tech people to get in my briefcase there and hand me my Bible because I forgot to bring my Bible up. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be great. It's hard for me to preach without a Bible. And uh, so uh, I've got it on my phone and it's here in my notes and they actually print it out for me really nicely, but I just really enjoy uh, my, my Bible that's with me. So thank you. <clears throat> Through our spiritual eyes. Right now, we look at our world, and is there something else going on? Has the government gone crazy? Thank you, my brother. Has the government gone crazy, right? The government's at odds with the other. There's huge divisions between the left and the right, and it's just, you know, there's just more vitriol than I've ever heard before. Um, you know, people ask you, who are you going to vote for, Pastor? Who are you going to vote for? You know, I'm pretty much a, a one-issue voter. And I look and see, what do they do with the unborn? What is that person's stance on the unborn? And that usually determines my, my vote. Um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but this could possibly be a non-election. It could be so much uh, craziness going on that we might not even have an election. That's a little scary. 
Uh, right now we're dealing with this closed schools and you're having to you know, take care of your kids at home and, and try to teach them online and the struggle that's going through there and that's crazy. I mentioned last week about a water problem that I had and uh, having to run down to Home Depot and <laughs> it's just crazy. In fact, I was down there at Home Depot and saying, I, I got Sandy to go with me, which is kind of fun. She would just go to Home Depot with me and <laughs> wandering through there and I looked at all the people in Home Depot and everybody's just you know, enjoying their time and getting their stuff and all the things that they need. And I said, you know, wow, there's a lot of people here at Home Depot. It's amazing they will let people go to Home Depot, but they won't let people go to church. They're just, you know, it's crazy. Uh, and and my, my house is a mess. It's, it's, the world's gone crazy. They've got this thing cordoned off. They've got these big, I got big sheets of plastic. These fans are blowing everywhere. And it's a mess. That's just in me personally. Then I look at the news and I look at violence on the streets daily. We're just hearing about more violence. And is there something beyond this? Is there something behind this? What is going on in our world? Same time all this crazy is going on, you look at people going about their business, trying to find some normal in what's going on. Um, and yet what I have seen, and everybody who's trying to be normal, there's an underlying fear. There's a sense inside of them that, man, things are not right, but I'm trying to pretend like things are right. I'm trying to pretend like things are going to be okay, but, but let's, just, let's not think about what may happen. Let's just keep going and hope and hope and hope that things are going to be all right. Well, I'm hoping to help you see today through spiritual eyes, through God's word, what's there this microscope, this telescope that God has given to us. As Kevin prayed for us to open our heart, give us insight. And God gives us amazing insight into our world. We've talked about how sin and Satan is in our world and that mankind as a, as a people are lost. We are born into this lostness. Here's what happened thousands of years ago in the garden. You know, with what we're going through right now, as I look into God's microscope, I can see that this is not new. Human history is repeating itself. We can see that any, any society, any country, any nation, any people group, a people without God will look like us, will look like the United States. The United States seems to be continually getting worse, and this will happen as a people without God will continue to do. They will just continue to get worse and worse and worse. <clears throat> this is why this new church is so important for us to get into and to finish. And that each of us begin to recognize that we have a part to play in changing the direction of our society to help raise the spiritual temperature of certainly the valley here in this region. And it's so important for us to see through our spiritual lives. Let me give you just a little insight. From Ephesians chapter 2, the Word of God says this. It says, you were once dead because of your failures and sins. That's each one of us, you and I. We were dead because of our failures and sins. And you followed the ways of this present world. The ways of this present world. You followed the ways of this present world. The, the world is in the state that it's in because people are following the ways of what's happening. And then it gives us this amazing look the microscope, and its spiritual ruler. Who's the spiritual ruler? Is it the Pope? The, you know, the president? Uh, no. No, there's something else besides that. And there continues, it goes on, the ruler continues to work in people who refuse to obey God. Continues to work in people who refuse to obey God. What, what it's saying is that this thing will continue until people stop following the ruler of this world, the spiritual ruler, the prince. Another version uh, translation says, uh, calls it the prince of the power of the air. You remember we talked about how Satan was kicked out of heaven and that evil uh, came into our world. What is it that's ruling right now? If you think about the things that are happening, the craziness that's going on, I, I would call that evil. I would see that as something less than. And this evil actually works in people, not just, you know, not in, not in buses and I don't know how that, all that works or in car computers and all that kind of stuff. But I know this, the Word of God shows us that it works in people. One of the most famous cases in the Bible is this guy Judas, right? Not, not that's that guy Judas betrayed Christ. Uh, Jews had walked with Jesus for, for three and a half years and saw him and, and hung out with him. But then it comes down to the last night where Jesus is going to get arrested. He's having the, the, the communion, the first communion, 
uh, the Lord's table there. And he says, hey, whoever dips their bread in this uh, sop with me is going to be the one who betrays me. And so Judas takes some of the bread. And right then, the Bible says, and Satan entered him. In that moment, Satan entered him. For three and a half years, Judas was following Jesus and was being influenced. Influenced, though at some point in his, in, in his life, he gave himself over to evil. And allow Satan to enter him. When we make a decision not to obey God's word, not to obey God, it allows the spiritual ruler, the prince of the power of the air, to influence us. And Jesus, Judas had been, was being influenced by Satan all along. He was, he was with Jesus all this time. Do you realize that you can go to church? You can watch me online. You can watch other pastors online. You can, you can, when we get to, and we're looking, hopefully looking forward to being in church next week, but you can even come to a church, you can sing the songs and still be influenced by the spiritual ruler of this world, by the things around you. You might say, well, I'm not going to listen to this ruler. Uh, what other choice do you have? You say, well, I, I take my own counsel. I only listen to myself. You might say, you know, Satan has not entered me. If you'll simply recognize, maybe, maybe open your spiritual eyes for a little bit, you can see that you're truly being influenced by the world around you. When enough people in the world tell you that it's okay to teach an elementary student uh, in their sex ed class that, hey, you can, you can be whatever, whatever sex you want to be. And you may even say, sure, science and data say this, and, and psychologists say that, hey, people are born with, with the wrong body. But you, you teach that to an elementary kid? Really? If I had have told you that this was going to be taught 10 years ago in the schools, you'd have been appalled. Just, no. <clears throat> but what happened? You and I get coerced. We get shamed. We get shunned. We get bullied into going along with the things of society that intellectually we know are clearly false what is that called that's called influence that's called being affected by the ruler of this world the spiritual ruler of this world <clears throat> excuse me the more i refuse to obey god the more separated i become from him and the more influenced i am by the work of darkness the united states is separating from him more and more and more at a more rapid pace than any other time in history. And you look at the results, I mentioned them earlier. It's not a coincidence that churches are under attack. And when you look at God's word, and you look at history, you can see it's simply being repeated over again. What eventually happens is somebody rises up, a, a person, a, a dictator, somebody who says, I'm in charge. And takes power and he promises, she promises to bring peace. Hey, I'll bring peace. But that peace always comes with a price. And that price is your personal freedom. If Satan can make the world so bad and make, it, make people live in fear and fear fills the heart enough and then somebody comes along and promises peace and we say, I just want to go back to normal. <clears throat> we will give up our liberties. This is how Karl Marx promoted communism. It's how socialism was embraced in our world. And we use things like, well, it's for the children. It's for their future. The Bible speaks directly to it. It even talks about what will happen here in the end days. Where Satan will influence and enter into the Antichrist and the false prophet. And they will look on the outside very good. But in the inside, they're totally corrupt. And if you look with your natural eyes, you will go, hey, that sounds good. Oh, well, science promotes this. The data promotes this. But something inside of you will say, it's, it doesn't quite feel right, but oh, it must be all right. What begins to happen? The world becomes more distressed and more depressed. And this distress and this depression leads to anger. It leads to broken relationships. It leads to fighting with people. It leads to political struggles. It leads to masks and money. But God is calling us to see through our spiritual eyes. 
The Bible is simply the story of mankind. Mankind has been here before. And we learn from the Bible that when the world goes crazy, we must see the world through God's eyes or we will end up depressed and distressed. And I want you to know that there is good news for you this morning, even in a world that's gone crazy. There's a prophet named Jeremiah. He wasn't a bullfrog. He was known as the weeping prophet. And he lived in a similar time as we are living. His nation had at one time obeyed God. And then more and more people turned their back on him. They stopped surrounding themselves with the people of God. They stopped meeting together. They stopped going to church. They listened to their culture. And as it always happens, evil became rampant. It sounds just like what we're going through the day. In fact, in Jeremiah 23, he writes this. The prophet writes this. He says, for the land is full of adultery. You, you, you remember when adultery was a bad thing? Today, it's almost commonplace. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. My husband did it too. Oh, yeah. My wife did too. For the land was full of adultery and it lies under a curse. When sin is rampant in a nation, there is a curse that comes with it. The land itself is in mourning. It's like they could feel it just in the, in, the, in the nature. Its wilderness pastures are dried up. I don't know if these fires are a cause of this. I don't know. For they all do evil and abuse what power they have. Whatever power they have, they abuse it. And they all do evil. Jeremiah, for 40 years, was calling people to come back to God. Most of the people would not listen. And they persecuted him for sharing the good news, tried to silence him, tried to shut him down, tried to close him down. And in that time, he got discouraged. If you can imagine 40 years trying to communicate a message of hope and life and people not listening, and he got distressed. It got so bad in his life, at one point, uh, he writes a, a book, some words, of a poem called the Book of Lamentations. If you're at, if you're at home, uh, say that word, lamentations, lamentations. It comes from the Latin word, which it literally means a funeral dirge. You know, it's kind of that pall that hangs over. Things are bad. Things are lost. It's written in five chapters. The first four are actually an acrostic. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and 22 verses in each of the four, first four chapters. And the first line starts with, Aleph, and then Beta, and Gamel, and Daleth, and Hay, and so forth. And you wonder, why is he writing in this acrostic form? And maybe it was to help him to memorize it. He, he was putting God's word in his heart as the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. He said, hey, I'm going I'm to help you memorize this lament. So that when people in the future go through times of lamentations, when they feel like they're distressed and discouraged and depressed, they can put their put uh, uh, my word in their heart. I wonder if Jeremiah took the first 14 minutes of each day and he committed some of God's truth to memory. Hmm. I wonder if it would help us to take God's word and be able to, every day to spend a little bit of time in it. Say, God, I need your word. To, I might never forget the truth no matter what psychologists or philosophers or scientists are promoting. God, I want to be influenced by your truth. I want to see through spiritual eyes. I don't have time to open all five chapters, though I would love to. I, I, I'm, going to I'm going to focus on just one of the chapters. And it's not a terribly encouraging book, the Book of Lamentations. In fact, um, he's unloading a lot of pain and fear. He's dumping it on God. and Really, he's complaining to God. And, and through his complaints, he's letting God open his spiritual eyes and speak to him through that morning. I need my spiritual eyes opened. You know why? Because you can ask my wife. I found myself complaining a lot lately. Um, I, I hope you don't need this message this morning, but maybe it's just for me. But here's some lessons I've learned through my complaining to God and Jerry the prophet has helped me. So if you look in your notes there, we're in Lamentations chapter 3. When your world has gone crazy, number one, tell it or yell it, but get it to God exactly how you feel. 
when your world has gone crazy, tell it or yell it or get it to God's. Be honest with what you see. This is the first step. I need to tell God exactly how I feel. If nothing else, it's therapeutic. You know, I've shared this with you before. I've told you there are times when I get alone in a cemetery and, and it's just me and God and a bunch of dead people. There's nobody there to t- talk back to me, right? And I tell God like it is. I just, God, here's what's going on in my life, in my marriage, with my kids, and I'm tired of it and I can't figure out, why don't you do something about this, God? Have you ever felt that way? God, where are you? How come you are not coming through? And this comes right out of Jeremiah. In this book of Lamentations, he's frustrated with God and he's letting God God know exactly how he feels. Look in your notes there. Look at chapter 3. He says, I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his fury. And he's talking about God. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day. He has worn away my skin and my flesh. He's broken my bones. He's besieged and surrounded me. Bitterness and hardship. All that I have around me is bitterness and hardship. He made me live in darkness like those who are long dead. He's walled me so I can't escape. He's weighed me down with chains. Even when I cry out, he says pleading for help. God, God, he shuts out my prayers. He has barred my way in blocks with stone. He has made my paths crooked. Now I want you to jump down to verse 18. I have been so deprived of peace. I have so forgotten what happiness is. Do you remember what it was like before COVID? Before the world has gone crazy? That I think My strength is gone, and so is my hope in God. Folks, that's right there in your Bible. Does that surprise you that one of the great prophets of old would say, I've lost hope in God? Somebody calling God out right here in the the Word. And he does this for five chapters. And really, he's just complaining to God. He's saying, God, this stinks. Why in the world would God put this kind of passage in the Bible? Why, why, I, want the, I want the words of hope. I want the words of joy. And all with, with God. You know why? Because God can handle, he wants us to see that God can handle our frustration. He can handle our anger. He can handle your gripes and your grief. He can handle it when you're going through times when you don't know what's going on. You know, Lamentation is actually one long book of, of complaints. God is allowing Jeremiah to blow off some steam. You've heard me say this before, but if, if, if we don't deal with our emotions, if we don't talk out our emotions to God, we will take them out on our body. You can swallow your emotions, but you're going to pay for it in your stomach. Right? You've got to let them out. If you, if you don't take them out on God, they're going to they're show up in your body. You're going to get distressed and discouraged, and your body's going to get sick. It's get, it gets weak. It's proven. And if you, don't, if you don't take them out on your body, you're, you'll take them out on somebody else. It's like when you squeeze a Twinkie and you know what's going to come out. You put enough pressure on something and something's going to come out and it's going to squirt all over the people around you. But God says it's okay. You can take it out on me. I can handle it. Go ahead. Just tell me how you feel. Give me all your complaints. Come on. And we say it's.